turning 25 this year. Is it my proudest moment to be like, oh yeah, I'm making a video about relationships when some of the people were like teenagers and Disney Channel drama. Is it my proudest moment? No, no. Is it my proudest moment to tell you that I really enjoyed going through and researching all the drama? No, it's not my proudest moment. That's why I'm wearing like a little purse. I'm wearing a little purse. It means like, oh, I mean business. I'm a businesswoman. I'm turning 25 this year. Purse means that I have somewhere to go after this. Like I'm leaving, I can dash out the door. Not necessarily in the skirt because it's like two degrees outside, but still. Oh, me? I have somewhere to be. I bought this with my own money. I'm turning 25. Regardless, we have fun on this channel, okay? Let's set a few things straight. I don't know why the biggest photos of Joshua Bassett. Pretty sure I didn't do that. Instead of believing that I could have possibly messed up when ordering these photos, I'm just gonna convince myself that the CBS employee in which I had to order these from uh, just has like an affinity towards Joshua Bassett and was like, we're gonna make him the biggest photo on this wall. Additionally, I didn't tear the photo of Joshua Bassett and Olivia Rodrigo. It's symbolism because you know, the relationship is torn. Spoiler alert, oh my. Once again, I think the CVS employee just has like a really strong affinity towards Joshua Bassett was like, oh, fuck them. And then just like tore it a little bit. Enough that it's visible, but like not too much so that it can be passed off as an accident. And lastly, before we get started into the video, Thank you so much to today's sponsor. I want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Care Of. I am honestly losing track of how many friends I have gotten to start using Care Of by now. In case you didn't know, Care Of offers a curated set of products that are designed to work with research backed ingredients and optimal doses. The app even helps you track how you're feeling and play back insights about your results over time so you can adjust your routine as your needs change. My top health goals this year is definitely taking better care of my stomach and also getting better sleep every single night. So thanks to Care Of, I have been taking a prebiotic plus every single day. I feel like that has made such a big difference with my gut health. If you have tummy issues, then you know how important prebiotics and probiotics really are. But unfortunately they can be very, very expensive in stores. So I love that I can use Care Of to help me get my prebiotic for an affordable price. And I also love that it comes directly to my door because sometimes I will run out of a vitamin and then I'm like, mm. I don't feel like going out to buy this again. And then I'm just like not taking it anymore. Both care of literally comes right to my door. So as soon as I'm done with my 30 day pack, another box will arrive. If you want to get started on your care of journey, take care of's quest to find out what's recommended for you. You can use my code, Nicole Raffi to get 50% off your first order. And I'll also have a QR code on the screen so that you can easily scan that. Thank you care of. I get it. I get it. This drama happened years ago. I completely understand. It was the beginning of the pandemic when this all went down. However, I'm a new Sabrina Carpenter stan. I fucking love that girl to pieces. I love her. Oh my God. I don't know if I want to be with her or be her. I don't know. And I'm just choosing to not address that head on right now. It's something that I'm putting into the back of my mind and at the bottom of my to-do list. Like I'll get to it at some point. I don't know when. Sabrina is finally getting the flowers that she deserves. She's finally gaining popularity. And Olivia Rodrigo, I mean, she's like killing it as per usual. She has been getting her flowers and she has been the popular girl that she deserves to be. But as a new Sabrina Carpenter fan, this drama has been on my mind because I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. 2021, when all of this drama was going down, me not having a single clue who Olivia Rodrigo, Joshua Bassett, nor Sabrina Carpenter were, I was invested just as everyone else was who was on TikTok and heard the song Driver's License. Like me too, just like everyone else. I was against Sabrina Carpenter. I was like, wow, fuck her. Like damn, okay sheeple. Anyway, it's 2024 and we have to ask ourselves, was all of this drama and hate justified? Or did we just hate women? Did we slut shame a girl and label her as a homewrecker for nothing? Did we pit two successful women against each other because of a man? Or was maybe possibly the man a victim in all of this as well? Hmm, we're definitely gonna find out in this YouTuber's video. Uh-huh, yeah, for sure. Definitely have answers to all of your questions. Definitely have inside scoop. I definitely know these people personally. Uh, <laughs> I definitely know everything that went down. Who is Olivia Rodrigo? Said no one ever. <coughs> Olivia Isabel Rodrigo, born February 20th, 2003, is an American singer, songwriter, and actress. She first rose to prominence for starring on the Disney television programs, Bizarre Vark, which also Jake Paul was on. Mm. And then also High School Musical, the musical the series. Um, I think I should have watched the entire series in preparation for this video. Maybe I will right after it. I don't know. Probably have heard of her because of her song Driver's License that got very, very popular at the beginning of 2021, broke various records and became one of the best selling songs of 2021, helping her achieve mainstream fame. Followed up with singles like Deja Vu and Good For You and released her studio album Sour in 2021. Disney Plus documentary, three Grammy Awards, various accolades, very, very, very successful young woman. One of the biggest pop stars right now, absolutely love Sour and Guts. If you've been watching me for many years now, you would know that I was not really into pop music before. I was one of the most annoying people alive in which I was like, I don't like pop music. And I especially don't like music by women. And that's what I did. I only listened to insufferable music by men. 
indie music to be specific. So you can only imagine how insufferable I was. Now I'm what you would call born again. And by born again, I mean like a born again pop girly. Love Olivia Rodrigo, love the new album. I think she's funny. I think she's talented. I think she's a great role model. I love her friendship with Conan Gray, been a big fan of Conan Gray for many years. And I think she's exactly what the industry has been missing the last few years. And so I'm really happy that she's in the scene. Before we dive into the whole timeline, we need to know who the hell is Sabrina Carpenter. Sabrina Carpenter was born on May 11, 1999 in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Guess who else is from Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania? Lil Peep, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and me. Nikki fucking Nasty's from Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. I'm gonna be honest with you, growing up when I would like Google who was from the Lehigh Valley, the obvious answers would come up like Amanda Seyfried. Like I knew that because I went to the same high school as her. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, because every single teacher I ever had was like, I dated him, like I'm sure you did. And Sabrina Carpenter would come up, but Girl Meets World was like, after my generation of watching Disney. I don't remember exactly when I stopped watching Disney, but I do know that I would come home and watch South Park and TMZ and Dr. Phil every single day. And then I was like curious why I was getting like really depressed. Maybe if I would have stuck it out and watched Girl Meets World, then maybe I would have been fine. Anyway, I got her and Dove Cameron confused all the time. So she was on Girl Meets World, a spinoff of Boy Meets World. And in April, 2015, she released her debut album, Eyes Wide Open. This girl now has five studio albums out. She also made her Broadway debut as Caddy Heron in Mean Girls in March, 2020, which she only got to perform in two shows before COVID. And I haven't watched Mean Girls yet, but a lot of people are upset that Sabrina Carpenter didn't play Caddy Heron in the movie. And I would have been here for it because any chance that I get to see Sabrina Carpenter on my screen, I am going to take that chance. So what has pushed Sabrina Carpenter into the spotlight as of recent, even though she's had a Disney Channel show, five studio albums? It is that she has served as the opening act on Taylor Swift's era tour in 2023 for a number of Latin American shows. On November 17, 2023, Sabrina Carpenter released a Christmas EP titled Fruitcake, which features the previously released remix A Nonsense Christmas, along with five new tracks. This blew her the fuck up. Honestly, whoever's working on her marketing, geniuses. I've seen a lot of conversations about Sabrina Carpenter being like the epitome of like a slow rise celebrity. And I think that's for the best because a lot of times high rise celebrities, like quickly rising celebrities, like overnight successes can be really harmful to the actual person. And I think a slow rise is amazing because it has taken her so many years to essentially be this like overnight success as people are seeing her now, like, oh, where the hell did Sabrina Carpenter come from? But she's been doing this for so many years. Her opening for Taylor Swift completely makes sense. It has gained so many fans. And me, as someone who's like not even that big of a Taylor Swift fan, doesn't really listen to her music, was not at the Eras tour. Just seeing her videos on TikTok of her prancing around the stage, looking cute as hell, having the cutest little outfits, doing the cutest little outros for nonsense, which we'll get into soon. Absolutely hilarious. And it has drove her into the spotlight so much so that someone who's like not even consuming Taylor Swift content, I, I am a Sabrina Carpenter fan because she opened for Taylor Swift on the Eras tour. And then she had a Christmas album come out. Like I'm always gonna think of her as Mrs. Christmas. I listened to her Christmas music so much this last Christmas. The Christmas music I like is like the depressing ones. Worry over. Sabrina Carpenter changed that for me. I love her. The grip on the mic has changed. That's how you know I'm getting serious. She even discusses this mindset of a slow rise while accepting her Variety Hitmakers Rising Star Award. I really loved getting to know the mindset of a slow rise and uh, knowing that I have a lot to look forward to and- Highly recommend that you watch Moco Coco's podcast episode talking about Sabrina Carpenter's rise to fame. Something else that has made her really popular is her Feather music video. Sabrina has a song called Feather, which released almost two years ago. Last year, she finally uploaded a music video for it and that was on a Tuesday. By the end of the week, a Catholic priest had been stripped of his administrative duties because of it. Because it was so raunchy. It was so naughty, it was so bad, which honestly it really wasn't. And like, I, I know what's naughty in the Catholic church because I grew up Roman Catholic, okay? Her video was not that bad. Anyway, the thing that like solidified for me that I'm a Sabrina Carpenter fan was when she was uh, questioned on the red carpet how she feels about, you know, a priest getting in trouble for her feather music video. She was like, well, Jesus was a carpenter. That's so fucking funny. You're right. And he would have been a carpenter. That's the same energy as Justin Bieber being like, Anne Frank would have been a believer. Is it? Is it? At the end of each nonsense song live, she mixes up the last few lines to be like cheeky and fun and raunchy depending on what city she's in. Me living in Philly is only appropriate that I read you guys the Philly one. This crowd is giving me all of the endorphins. <laughs> Liar. I know where the fuck we're from. We're far from Philly. But like for the rhyme, valid, 100%. You're from Philly. And of course, I have to mention, I've got a personality, but no tits. Joshua, 
Speaking of which, who the hell is Joshua Bassett? Joshua Taylor Bassett, born December 22nd, 2000, is an American actor and singer. He is known for his starring role as high school student Ricky Bowen in High School Musical, the musical, the series. He is a key player in this all, okay? He has done a lot of musical work. Nowadays, he's kind of choosing to be out of the spotlight a bit more. I will get into that at the end of this video, but he's not necessarily having this like absolutely booming pop career like Olivia Rodrigo and Sabrina Carpenter. And that's okay. I did want to mention though that Sabrina and Olivia were seen together in the past. Prior to all this drama going down, they were seen around each other, which makes total sense considering that they were both on the Disney Channel. There are recorded moments of Olivia Rodrigo absolutely fangirling over Sabrina Carpenter before either of them had even met Joshua. At the Rated Disney Music Awards, who are you most excited to see perform tonight? Oh, um... Sabrina Carpenter. Talking about being excited about seeing Sabrina Carpenter perform, excited about her new releases, being very, very supportive towards Sabrina Carpenter. When High School Musical, the musical, the series got started, Joshua Bassett was among the first to be casted. And then Olivia came later down the line as part of the cast. Olivia was dating a different guy at the time named Ethan. Teenage relationship, okay, like that, okay. But when they started the show, Olivia was taken, all right. She got taken and that lock emoji in her bio. I don't know if she did, I don't know. <laughs> However, Olivia and Joshua kept getting closer and closer because duh, they're co-stars. Additionally, they were love interests on the show. At some point, Olivia and her boyfriend, Ethan, had broken up and it was revealed that Joshua Bassett was like writing this cutesy little song about wanting a girl that he like just cannot have. Interesting. Also important to note, Olivia had revealed that Joshua had taken her driving for the very first time. I couldn't drive actually, I was 16, but I like didn't have permit and so he took me in his car and we like drove around the in and out parking lot and that was my first time driving so i'll always remember that <laughs> she did not have her license but she had her permit and so they would drive around in his car which i don't know if it's legal in california and like i don't care now like obviously like oh big fucking deal but at least in the state of pennsylvania you have to be like with someone who's 25 driving i digress i'm not a cop my cop days are done i'm no longer an ra now their relationship progresses and although a lot of it is just like flirting and teasing and like no one's admitting that they're dating each other or seeing each other or like that they like each other like none of that but it's amazing press for the show like they're getting questioned on the red carpet like are you two dating beautiful press for the show like, oh my God, Disney won with this one. They're both like musical theater kids. They're both writing songs back and forth and posting them on each other's Instagrams. When I was in high school and I knew the theater kids, that was happening. Writing songs about each other back and forth. Ooh, sometimes maybe even a spoken word poem for like 30 minutes. Like that shit happened. That is musical theater kids to a T. Early February, 2020, Olivia posts the song crazy on Instagram and Sabrina Carpenter comments on it. Love, love, like being like a supportive girl, you know? However, shortly after, Sabrina unfollows Olivia on Instagram and then Josh follows Sabrina and starts liking her posts. It's not even happening to me and I feel like a knife is getting twisted in the heart. Then again, if your boyfriend is following Sabrina Carpenter and starts liking your photos, it's over, it's over. It's over. Olivia then posts a song, Never Be Like Her. A lot of people speculate that it's actually about Sabrina Carpenter as Josh is interacting with Sabrina's posts a lot more recently. Some themes in the song are, she's older, blonde, I'll never look like her. I have to note this. This does seem to be a pretty common theme in a lot of Olivia Rodrigo songs, even to this day. It does seem like this is a common theme in a lot of Olivia Rodrigo songs is comparison and jealousy, and specifically this older blonde woman, okay? The way that Olivia keeps reiterating that this girl is so much older and blonde, you're probably like thinking like, oh my God, she's talking about fucking Barbara Walters because of how much the emphasis is on like, oh my God, she's old. In reality, it's Sabrina Carpenter, most likely, allegedly, supposedly, maybe, I guess. April slash May, 2020, Olivia Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett are reportedly broken up. Specifically, Josh breaking up with her because she revealed in her Disney Plus documentary about the album that she wrote the song one step forward, three steps back, and the next day, this guy had broken up with her. So although they had never like come out and been like, we're official, like we're together, it's safe for us to assume they were together. They were official. Okay, like that's totally fine. Relationships when you're young end. May 2020, fans claim to spot Joshua and Sabrina Carpenter kissing. There's like a video of it. He's like giving her a fucking forehead kiss. Oh, life ruining. 
like genuinely i know it seems like i'm making fun of things and like that i'm making them out to not be as big as they are i've been told that a lot recently that people can't tell when i'm serious or when i'm genuine that is me being so fucking genuine right there like i would absolutely be heartbroken if my boyfriend my ex-boyfriend like of just two weeks ago was fucking giving forehead kisses to sabrina fucking carpenter yeah my life is over bye and i'm being as genuine as i can be about that sorry doesn't seem like it fast forward to olivia rodrigo releasing traitor she does mention in that song that he moved on really quickly it took him two weeks could it be about them maybe maybe i don't know june 2020 joshua bass and sabrina carpenter are spotted at a black lives matter protest people are like speculating like oh my god they're kissing people are on twitter posting tea about it as if they're like spotted at saddle ranch not at a literal black lives matter protest but anyway oh my god they kiss oh my god they're holding hands oh my god they're spotted a lot together and it's even rumored that sabrina had visited him on set late 2020 in salt lake city something that Olivia Rodrigo said did suck. He was with someone new and she had to just watch that. When Joshua and Sabrina dress up as Shark Boy and Lava Girl for Halloween. It's like a little stab to the stomach. Like, oh my God, not only does he like Sabrina Carpenter and he's liking her, but he dressed up as Shark Boy and Lava Girl. He gave her forehead kisses and they're dressing up like Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that shit hurted. It's awkward between Olivia and Joshua. Obviously, they have to work together. Olivia is braver than a US Marine for having to do these interviews, having to do press with him. She's a better person than I could ever be. And that's also why she's a millionaire and a pop star and like an actor and a musician and I'm not. So Iris Apatow, Olivia's best friend, posted a story to congratulate her on the song for the holiday special and covered Joshua's face with a sticker on the Instagram story. Only Joshua's face only his with a sticker that sticker didn't need to be included and only his face i don't care what anyone says i would do that for my best friend and my best friend would do that for me and you know what dare i say iris habitat was a great friend anyway she deleted it and like an hour later put it back up no sticker so like i said tension there is tension december 22nd 2020 it is joshua bassett's birthday something to know is that barely any of the cast for high school musical the musical the series Stupidest fucking name ever, sorry. Barely any of the cast post for his birthday. Barely anyone. When it was Olivia's birthday, Joshua even posted Olivia. Olivia did not post anything for Joshua's birthday publicly. However, Olivia does share the first snippet of driver's license and most of the cast likes and supports her post. <gasps> we'll touch on this a little bit more later, but she has been compared a lot to Taylor Swift with her writing process of her music, kind of like Easter eggs and hints and, you know, significant dates and significant numbers. I just think that's interesting. January 4th, 2021, Joshua Bassett posts that the song Lie, Lie, Lie is going to be coming out soon. She supports this, and this is the last time that we're going to see them really interact publicly. So Lie, Lie, Lie is announced on the 4th and set to come out on the 14th, while January 8th, 2021, driver's license is out. Driver's license is out to the world and Josh even reposts it to show support. I mentioned these timelines because a lot of people say that Lie, Lie, Lie by Joshua is a song that is supposed to be like a diss track against Olivia. That's supposed to be like the response song to that. Everyone basically claims it is not. Joshua claims it's about a friend who he found out was lying behind his back for a long time. The song was announced before driver's license was. I don't know how things are behind the scenes. However, they claim this is not a response song. January 8th, 2021, driver's license is out and Josh reposts it to show support. It's like, so proud of you, Liv. So proud of you. Great song. The song is about me, but great song. He didn't say that, but driver's license comes out and everyone figures out that it is, of course, about Joshua Bassett. The girlies are invested. The girlies love Olivia Rodrigo. The girlies are invested. They know Joshua has been dating Sabrina Carpenter. The whole song is about how she essentially got her driver's license and how he was going to be so excited for her and everything. And now they're not together, so she just drives alone past the street like, this fucking sucks, didn't think that it would end up this way. Fans figure out, of course it's about him. But she talked about publicly about how he helped her with driving. Little hints were used, Taylor Swift Easter eggs. People know it's about Joshua Bassett. So between this time of driver's license coming out and Li 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 coming out, Joshua gets admitted to the hospital for septic shock and heart failure due to stress. That is horrible. Joshua was facing so much backlash online because everyone was pissed at him. Everyone's like, fuck you. Like, you're a mean boy for that. Like, you're fucking mean. And we know Olivia Rodrigo has some of the most diehard fans out there. Even at the time, this was before she was very, very big. 
People were coming to support her on her side. It was kind of like a TikTok trend, like major celebrities were talking about it. At the time, Anna Marie Tendler, John Mulaney's ex-wife was even posting about it, how she was, you know, feeling betrayed. This song was everywhere and it was fucking blowing up. And we later learned that the stress did get to Joshua Bassett. January 14th, the song Lie 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 comes out. People of course are like, oh my God, this is a response song. What a dick, whatever. January 22nd, Sabrina Carpenter releases her response song to driver's license called Skin. And Josh also posts it and supports the song Skin. Oh, where's, there she is. If you don't know, Skin is very much so a response song. She has went on to the Zack Sang show. She has done many interviews. It's a response song to Olivia Rodrigo's driver's license. Some of the lyrics read, Maybe we could have been friends if I met you in another life. Maybe then we could pretend there's no gravity in the words we write. Maybe you didn't mean it. Maybe blonde was the only rhyme. The only rhyme. Want my heart to be breaking, breaking? No, I'm happy and you hate it, hate it, oh. And I'm not asking you to let it go, but you've been telling your side, so I'll be telling mine. You can try to get under my, under my, under my skin while he's on mine. Yeah, all on my, all on my, all on my skin. I wish you knew that even you can't get under my skin if I don't let you in. Don't drive yourself insane. It won't always be this way. Honestly, a lot of people did not like Sabrina Carpenter's response song to this. A lot of people did not. Because she was absolutely labeled a homewrecker, a slut. She had also written the song and released it in a week. It's not my favorite Sabrina Carpenter song by any means. And a lot of Sabrina Carpenter fans will agree that I really wish that she would have released the song all because I liked a boy instead, which is really great. And it's an amazing song. Basically talking about how she has been labeled a homewrecker and a slut all because I liked a boy. I think it was a much better song to put out. I understand the urgency in wanting to release a response song, but I don't know if it was the best press for Sabrina because she was labeled as, oh my God, look at this bitch. Oh my God, look at this older girl. She's a bitch. She even put this line in the song that she's a, Homewrecker stealing from the young, which is very funny considering that Olivia Rodrigo is only a few years younger than Sabrina. But anyway, Olivia has asked if she has listened to the song Skin and if she likes it. And she's like, yeah, I listened to it. That's it. I listened to it. This girl's media trained. Do you like Skin? I think it's nice. I listened to it. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> Olivia, I love you. Thank you for coming on the show. Whatever kind of media training they're doing at Disney. I, I want to learn about it. And I'm really happy that Renee Rapp never got that. But anyway, she was also asked if she would do a response song to the response song. And Olivia mentions that she doesn't know Sabrina. I've met her once or twice in passing. I couldn't write a song that's meaningful or emotional about someone that I do not know. This song is absolutely making Olivia Rodrigo's career skyrocket. While Sabrina and Josh are kind of looked down upon and lack of a better way to say it. May 12th, 2021, Joshua is doing an interview and talking about Harry Styles and they keep asking him questions about Harry Styles in which he jokes, oh, I guess this is my coming out video, which then he talks about that he did not intend for it to be that. He did not intend on necessarily coming out and he didn't really necessarily want to. However, he does later make a post about coming out as bisexual. Olivia is even questioned by GQ, asked about Joshua's coming out and she said, I don't know anything about it and it's not my business to speak on it. But needless to say, they were in the news a lot, especially the first half of the year. In June, Olivia Rodrigo and Adam Faze are actually spotted together. Who? is a lot older than her. That kind of made news like, oh my God, Olivia moved on. Olivia also talked about her wariness of releasing the song Deja Vu because she didn't want to add to this whole love trying spectacle and hate on other women because she said that is absolutely not what she's trying to do here. July 15, 2022, Sabrina releases emails I can't send, which the song All Because I Liked a Boy is on. Additionally, nonsense and feather. 2021, their managers were put to work. From then on, things have pretty much died down, but I think it's important to note it's not like Sabrina Carpenter and Joshua Bassett ended up together. They didn't. It's not completely 100% known when, but Sabrina Carpenter and Joshua Bassett did end up breaking up. As things were dying down for the entire drama, Olivia's career obviously did skyrocket. Like she's one of the biggest pop stars now, but Joshua did start opening up about how that time was extremely difficult for him because he did go into septic shock and heart failure due to stress. And the table started to turn because Olivia started to receive a lot of hate that she didn't stand up for him at the time, did not tell her fans to stop with the hate. And how could she let this go on? Additionally, Joshua also had a trilogy, Crisis, Secret, and Set Me Free, where the song Secret alludes to Olivia cheating on Joshua 
and that he has a lot of allusions to the fact that what Olivia wrote in some of her songs weren't entirely true. Joshua also says in a Zach Sang interview that if he were to lay out the whole timeline of everything and how things all went down, it would supposedly shock everyone and that he's not able to tell his side of the story without putting other people down and exposing people and exposing the truth. So a lot of people started to turn their back against Olivia and we're like, girl, like she is the reason why this guy went to the hospital and why he got so much hate and why Sabrina got so much hate also. Honestly, what it genuinely seems like is that the fans just choose the side of whoever comes out with the newest information. Because if Sabrina Carpenter right now were to make another song or spill information about the entire situation, people would side with Sabrina. People would side with her and be like, well, the relationship was already over. And if Olivia were to pose a response song to that, of course, everyone would go team Olivia. It's just whoever has newer information. It's whoever has the most juiciest and newest information to feed people's little minds with. Which is why I think this situation is so complicated. Obviously, we're talking about young people's personal lives and relationship. In my opinion, I do not think that Olivia Rodrigo thought that driver's license would blow up to the magnitude that it did. I think she's inspired by one of her favorite artists, Taylor Swift, who openly talks about wanting to be honest in her songs, wanting to be honest and talk about her life because it is her life. And to that, I commend them so much. That is something, honestly, that I struggle with big time because I desperately would like to be more like Olivia Rodrigo and Taylor Swift who could be honest about their life and share their truth, um, but unfortunately have been spooked into being silenced. So if they feel confident and strong enough to write their own narrative, music about their life and things that they have experienced and the wrongs that other people have done to them, I think that's wonderful. I think that's a beautiful form of art. I think that's what makes them such great songwriters and musicians and that is something that unfortunately I don't think that I will ever be able to get to. At the end of the day, we're all looking into this parasocially. We don't really know what happened or what went on, despite how big of fans we are of Olivia Rodrigo, Joshua Bassett, Sabrina Carpenter. We don't fucking know. Hate to be this bitch. There's two sides to every story. From Joshua Bassett's perspective, I can understand why he couldn't necessarily speak his own story by being spooked into being quiet. Would it have been awesome for Olivia Rodrigo to say, hey guys, let's tone it down with the hate. Let's let's tone it down here. Please don't send death threats to anyone. Would that have been great? Sure. Is it necessarily her responsibility to? Not necessarily. Was she a very young girl navigating very new explosive fame? Yes. And who the hell knows what went on behind the scenes, what she was advised to do, by who, if she was communicating with people behind the scenes, we don't know. And for that, I do wanna give Olivia some grace because there seems to be this like demonizing against Olivia Rodrigo. Why didn't she do anything? Why didn't she say anything? Why didn't she put a stop to this? Her putting out a statement wouldn't have necessarily put an end to all the hate against Sabrina and Joshua. Let's make that clear. Cause I could say right now, guys, please don't leave any hate to any of the people involved underneath this video. Is everyone going to adhere to that? No. Also, please don't, but you get the point. I don't know. It's very tricky for me because Olivia Rodrigo was a child when this all happened, when this all went down. Maybe she wasn't given the best advice. I don't know. I'm really not sure. But I also do not want to demonize this girl for the rest of her life and feel like she can never redeem herself or, you know, grow as a person from this situation because I'm sure that everyone in the situation has learned a lot. That being said, did Sabrina Carpenter ever deserve to be called a slut, a homewrecker, when apparently Joshua and Olivia had been broken up when Sabrina and Joshua had started dating? She never deserved that. You know, she talked about how hard it was on her mental health and being in the news a lot and her name being spread. I can only imagine how difficult that must have been. And I can only imagine for Joshua how difficult that must have been. And I feel for every person in this story because you have a right to tell your story and you have a right to say your side and you have a right to defend yourself and say your side of the story. And you also have a right for feeling upset if something is not told completely the way that you want to and feeling like you're being silenced. And so it's one of these situations where I really feel for everyone in the situation. And because we don't know all of the information, I don't feel like I could be like, team this person, because I think they're all great people individually. I don't I don't know these people. So maybe they're awful people. I have no idea, but I like their music. I think it's good. I'm a huge fan of both Olivia and Sabrina. I will often listen to one Sabrina Carpenter song and then an Olivia Rodrigo song comes on next. It's like wearing a rare beauty highlighter and then your road peptide lip balm at, on at the same time. like. Yeah, it's conflicting, but they're both good products. Sabrina also got a lot of hate because there was speculation that the relationship between Sabrina and Joshua was contrived and, and that the relationship was planned behind the scenes and just for PR and that Joshua and Sabrina had never let Olivia know that, that the relationship wasn't real. Obviously, I don't know the truth behind that. Sabrina also got a lot of hate that she's in Scientology. We need to stay away from Sabrina. 
her family's in Scientology. We need to stay away from her. Sabrina herself has confirmed that she herself is not into Scientology. She is not a Scientologist. However, speaking of religion, Joshua Bassett did get pretty religious. Joshua Bassett posted that he was baptized by this church called the Bethel Church. He started tweeting a lot about Jesus, about seeking forgiveness from God. A lot of his fans were concerned, saying that this isn't really like him. He started assuring fans like he's doing better than he ever has before. He's encountered Jesus Christ in his real life twice now. All of this really, really concerned fans because they were like, he's not acting like himself. And the church that he chose to get baptized in is a pro-Trump church and also believes in conversion therapy and encourages people to leave homosexuality behind. It was really concerning for so many reasons. A young person who had just recently come out as being part of the LGBTQ plus community and suddenly going to a church that believes in conversion therapy. He has also spoken up about how he was raised from a very young age being taught that he needs to suppress the side of himself who, you know, is bisexual and is emotional and has feelings and how difficult that was for him. Joshua did say that he did not know that the church had these policies and he does not endorse all of the policies that they have but this really did worry the community quite a bit i think people really did have joshua bassett's best interest in mind and if perhaps the stress of everything had led him to potentially go down something like the route of conversion therapy. Absolutely nothing wrong with finding faith, joining a church, getting baptized. The fear that they had was that he was going into something that seemed very toxic, as well as High School Musical, the musical, the series, or whatever the fuck. Um, a lot of the cast was gay and how hurtful to them it was for him to be supporting an institution that was so anti-LGBTQ+. Funny enough, Olivia Rodrigo did say that she once accidentally followed Joshua Bassett on Instagram. But Olivia and Joshua did actually reunite in real life when they were at the premiere of High School Musical, the musical. Probably contractual and an obligation for them, but it was nice for people to see the two of them together in person and talking after apparently not talking for a very long time. And so I hope everything is on good terms and reconciled between them. However, people are not done. People hate it when two successful women are in the same space together. People hate it. And so people often do pit Olivia Rodrigo and Sabrina Carpenter against each other. So Olivia Rodrigo has talked about how she is a huge fan of Taylor Swift, heavily inspired by her, has posted many videos singing along to her songs. So it hasn't been confirmed publicly that Taylor actually had a sued Olivia, but it is true that Taylor and her team did accuse Olivia of copyright infringement of Taylor's song, Cruel Summer. When Olivia's album Sour was released May 2021, fans noticed similarities between her song Deja Vu and Taylor's song, Cruel Summer. Apparently, according to BuzzFeed News, this was resolved in July of that year when Taylor and her new co-collaborators of the song Jack Antonoff and St. Vincent all quietly received credits for Olivia's deja vu. Essentially, Olivia had to give up millions of dollars in royalties by giving credit to Taylor and her co-collaborators. And this really pulled out a lot of Swifties and Olivia Rodrigo fans' heartstrings because they were like, oh shit, like Olivia was a really huge fan of Taylor. Like this is really awful and terrible for this to happen to her. And so when Taylor Swift's new album, Midnight's had come out, Olivia Rodrigo and Conan Gray were actually asked if they had listen to the new album and what they thought of it. And they had said that they haven't even had the chance to listen to it yet, which seems very suspicious as two people who are very big fans of them. I have a friend who works in the music industry and their opinion on this is that they potentially have said that they had not listened to her album at all in order to potentially try to not get sued yet again by being like, well, I haven't heard it. There's no way that I could have copied another song. Like I literally have not heard that album, which is just obviously very sad and it must be hard on her as per being a long time Taylor Swift fan. For example, I look up to Mike's Mike. I love Mike's Mike's videos, definitely heavily inspired by him. But if Mike's Mike was like, you have to now give me 50% of your ad revenue, that would ge genuinely, that would really hurt me financially and also emotionally because I'm like, fuck, I really looked up to you and I got inspiration from you. I didn't copy you completely, but especially when it's like legally binding, it's hard. Olivia Rodrigo has a song in the new Hunger Games movie, similar to like how Taylor Swift had a song in the original Hunger Games movie, Puff. Tough, 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 tough. And so people who do not like Olivia Rodrigo are really not letting it live down that Sabrina Carpenter was able to tour with Taylor Swift for the Eras tour. People are like, see, where's Olivia Rodrigo? Hmm, she didn't get to go tour with her. She didn't tour with her. Olivia didn't get to tour with her. Taylor chose Sabrina instead of Olivia. In reality, I don't think it's that deep. I think at the end of the day, it's just that Olivia Rodrigo was big enough to have her own headlining tour now. She doesn't necessarily really need to open up for anybody. Meanwhile, Sabrina Carpenter is still kind of this up 
and rising star. People are just now starting to learn a lot of the songs that she has had out now for years. And that's fine, but that's why she makes a great opener and why Olivia Rodrigo wouldn't exactly make sense as an Eras Tour opener. I think both these women are great, are, are on their own separate paths. Very different music, very different aesthetics, very different journeys in general, very different songwriting processes, everything, everything. And I think pitting the two against each other like I see online about like the whole Taylor Swift thing, I think it's petty. I think they're both cool in their own right. So like, ugh. anyway, where are they now? Joshua Bassett has been pretty quiet on social media as of recent. And I really genuinely do hope that he is doing okay. Olivia is reportedly dating Louis Partridge. She was recently on SNL and she is absolutely killing it. And her headlining tour starts soon. She's absolutely killing it. And Sabrina Carpenter is apparently dating none other than, hold on, him. She's dating him. His face is bigger than everyone on this fucking wall. Him, Sabrina's apparently dating Barry Keoghan. And I'm fucking here for it. And I absolutely love it. I think it makes total sense. Good for them. Good for Barry. You lucky son of a bitch. Sabrina's fucking killing it. She performed at Jingle Ball. Won a variety award. Performed in Times Square on New Year's Eve. And she's continuing the Australian leg of Taylor Swift's Eras tour. I cannot wait for her to release more music the second that she's on tour. I want to see her. Obviously, I'd love to see Olivia Rodrigo on tour. I think that's quite literally impossible. You know what I want to come out of this situation? I want an Olivia Rodrigo and Sabrina Carpenter song collab. I want a collab. I want a duo. That would break the internet. If they would have a song together, <gasps> oh my God. And you know what? And I hope it happens. And I hope it fucking happens. More than anything, I just want them to have a song together, okay? And maybe kiss. That could heal everything. That's it. That's all the lore I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure they leave it a like because it helps me out so much. Also leave a comment of anything that I missed. Please don't leave hate to anyone involved because this is not that kind of channel. Make sure you subscribe if you want to be nasty if not you're disgusting. Also make sure I have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else work gross. I have merch out and I have a podcast out every other Monday. If you want to follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to go now and I'm going to light a candle in front of this wall and hold a little seance that Olivia Rodrigo and Sabrina Carpenter make up, have a little song together and maybe kiss. Mm -hmm.